all right. Physical sciences, grade 10, formal experiment. The heating curve of water. We have already dealt with this uh, practical demonstration. Uh, that was the first uh, assignment that was given unto you. And we, we looked at all the phases, the different phases of water, liquid, uh, solid, and the gaseous phase of water and the temperatures uh, that accompanies all that. Right, uh, experiment by investigating the change in the temperature when heating ice. We've already looked at that. Now, the materials that will be needed is the glass beaker where we will pour in inside uh, uh, the water, crushed ice, a heat source, and the thermometer that will be able to tell us the temperature as uh, the substance uh, temperature increases. We need the tripod stand, we need the wire, uh, gauze, we need the stopwatch. We must set up the apparatus as shown in the sketch below. So what is drawn for us is the following. So we will be looking at a grade 10 science experiment. Uh, we will look at grade 10 science experiment. All right. And then, And I cannot record the way in which I want. Let me just try to rotate this. Good. All right. Uh, what is provided to us is the following. We are given an example of, uh, suppose you have uh, a stand and uh, underneath your stand, that's where you will have your glass uh, beaker uh, that is filled with H2O, not specifically showing whether it's in a solid or what, but let's say it's a solid. Let's say you have H2O in the solid state inside of that beaker and then you have uh, a heating source. You just have uh, a, a heating source uh, that ensures that the temperature of uh, the beaker uh, is increased. So inside here we will have uh, a thermometer. We will have uh, a thermometer. And then this will be a, uh, a glass beaker. And then uh, inside we have H2O in a solid state. We have uh, the wire gauze, something like a wire gauze here. And then you have the tripod stand. So this is our tripod stand and we have the Benson banner. This is our uh, <coughs> Benson banner. Right, so these are all the apparatus that are needed for the experiment to take place. Number one, they say fill a glass beaker half with crushed ice. So we take out the, ha the ice from the refrigerator, we, we pour that ice inside of the glass beaker and then half of the glass beaker is filled with this crushed ice. Immediately the temperature will increase because it is now moving from a solid state to a liquid state because of temperature increase. We measure the temperature with a thermometer and note uh, it in a table. We will write that on a table, that's fine. Unfortunately, we don't have the apparatus so that we can see the temperature of ice and uh, how this uh, <coughs> increases with an increase in time. But I will assume such experiment were done if you go to private schools, they will do that experiment before you are even handed over 
uh, the experiment so that you observe physically what transpires. But you go to the government schools and uh, you are in a very serious trouble. Such simple things they cannot simply afford. So it's so, it, it's so painful. How will you learn science? Because science is an experiment. You can never and ever understand science without experimenting with science. It, it's such a painful thing seeing happening uh, in these uh, ANC schools. Let me put it that way. Right, and then number three. Uh, place the beaker on a gauze wire on a tripod stand. That's exactly what we have done there. Uh, gently heat the beaker using a Benson banner. Uh, I, I remember when I was at Lesedin during those times, we, we conducted such experiments. We had Benson banners in our uh, school tables. They were fitted in uh, so that when we conduct, ex we conduct, ex we conduct experiments, all those materials were there. We were able to use these bends and banners which used gas in order to light up whatsoever that needed to be light up. So schools such as Lesedin were well equipped in terms of all the necessary material required to understand the chemistry and the physics behind all this. But everything is diminishing with time. While stirring continuously, measure the temperature every five minutes. So we keep on stirring gently, and then after every five minutes, we measure the change in, in temperature. Okay, that is fine. And then number five, continue stirring and measure the temperature until the water has boiled for three minutes. So meaning when it boils, the temp it is now in a gas state. And the temperature we know that water boils at 100 degrees all right so uh, make observations of the change in the faces as you continue heating the mixture of ice and water now this is very important make the observations of the change in faces as we keep on staring you must identify that uh, h2o will first H2O as a solid will change from a solid to H2O as a liquid and then as you keep on stirring and you stir gently and every five minutes you make your recordings you will reach a state where the H2O as a liquid changes the phase from solid liquid to a gas and we know that the temperature there must be 100 degrees Celsius because that's when water boils. <coughs> okay, that is fine. And uh, note all your temperature readings in a table because you will be recording this every five minutes. Now, draw the heating curve of water using the data that is obtained. I don't know how you manage to get these values that you have here. Oh, your teacher just gave you these numbers without you experimenting those numbers that the temperature was changing uh, from this to this that's what we call blind physics it, it's the blindest thing you can ever do because you don't know whether those numbers are true or not so you need to experiment so your teacher was in essence closing your eyes permanently so that you will never and ever understand the chemistry and the physics because you can never do these things without experimenting this is an experiment, something that you have to experiment, do it. Not me just coming and giving you the numbers without you be knowing. If I ask you, why did your teacher write zero degrees? Uh, maybe 10 degrees after zero uh, seconds. You don't know why. You were never there to see. You never measured anything. So you just got the data. You did not validate that data. It's, it's, it's the blindest thing ever to do if you want to learn chemistry. Because your teacher, <clears throat> I think, uh, okay, let's leave it. Let's leave it. So we have the numbers. I will assume that the experiment was done. So we have time in minutes. And we have uh, the temperature. So we have the time, we have the temperature, and then we can 
the temperature is of course in degrees Celsius. Temperature can also be in Fahrenheit. Tem temperature can also be in Kelvins. But we're using the degree here, which is not so popular in, in chemistry. We prefer the Fahrenheit and the Kelvins because of some reasons we will talk about when time is right as you ascend in physics. We, we will bother ourselves with that. Why is it necessary to use the Kelvin and the Fahrenheit as uh, the standard measures of temperature uh, opposed to uh, the degree measure of temperature? <clears throat> so time when it was zero minutes, five minutes, ten minutes, because they said we should measure every five minutes. So the time difference should be five minutes. So that is why we have 0, 5, 10, uh, 15, 20, uh, 25, uh, 30, and so on. I can see that we have uh, 25. <clears throat> oh, sorry. Uh, we have 30 and 35 minutes. Okay. Uh, we have uh, 10 degree. We have uh, 0, 0, 0. Uh, we have a... Uh, what is this number, my dear? What is this? What is this? <clears throat> the top one. Okay. This one. 25. 25. Okay. So we have uh, 25. We have uh, 45. Uh, we have 75. We have uh, 85, and during the 40 minutes, we have 85 degrees. And water has not yet boiled here, because water boils at 100 degrees. <clears throat> so by just looking at the data that is provided, uh, we have a problem with this, because the statement said, uh, where was that bulletin number? It said, continue stirring and measuring the temperature until the water has boiled for three minutes. Continue stirring and measuring the temperature until the water has boiled for three minutes. So, water boils at 100 degrees and you allow that water to boil for three minutes to see whether the temperature will rise above 100 or it will remain constant for the first three minutes after it has reached a temperature of 100. So we haven't even reached 100 here and you are yet 40 minutes conducting the experiment. We haven't even reached 100. So how do... Has water boiled? No, water has not boiled. Water boils at 100 degrees. And we haven't reached 100. And your teacher just stopped. He just stopped. They said we should continue heating and stirring until water boils for three minutes. Water has not yet even boiled. And the, already your teacher, the experiment was over. I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. Water has not even yet boiled. It is, it is at 85 degrees. Water has not yet boiled. <clears throat> Water is vibrating at that. It is evaporating. It, it is preparing itself for boiling. It is vi vi uh, 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 evaporating at 85 degrees. It has not yet boiled. But your teacher already, the experiment was done. Because water boils at 100 degrees and they said we should allow it to boil for three minutes. It has not even boiled, but your teacher was done. Okay, that's fine. I just want us to make sense. Taking into consideration the fact that water boils at 100. If water boils at 100 degrees, we are at 85. Has water boiled? No, it hasn't. <clears throat> But the experiment was done. Your teacher was complete. This is the data that came from your teacher. And then you look at the temperature at time uh, 40 minutes. It was at 85 degrees. It has not yet boiled. But the experiment was done. 
we have a problem with the data that is provided here. But let's continue with that. Now that we understand what is happening, they say in question one, we will try to answer the questions now. With the data that is provided, and this is 23 marks, answer the following questions <coughs> related to the experiment. What variables did you take into account in this experiment? Two marks are provided for this. They say, what variables did you take into account in this experiment? There are two variables that we must take into account in this experiment. The variable time and the variable temperature. So time in minutes and temperature in degree Celsius. These are the variables, those that goes into the Cartesian plane, your X and Y uh, coordinate system. All right. And then in 1.2, because this is two mark, you need two variables for this. 1.2, which factors uh, do you think could influence your results? What factors do you think will influence your results? Looking into all this. Now, remember what we have in this uh, experiment. We have the thermometer for measuring the temperature of uh, the, the water that we have. We have uh, the glass beaker, okay? So that has an impact in this because the type of material, if you look at what we call, uh, what is this? Uh, the type of the material when we calculate uh, MC delta T, the type of a material that makes up the substance also plays an impact uh, or a, a, a role in the material. So the glass beaker, the type of glass, will have uh, an impact in, in, in uh, the temperature that is absorbed by water. And then we also looked at, uh, we have the tripod stand that is fine. This is just a stand where you have to put in your uh, glass beaker that is fine. We have the Benson banner that is also fine. So which which uh, Factors do you think could influence the results? What factors do you think uh, could uh, influence the results of this? Now I would talk about uh, the glass beaker the type of material that makes up uh, the glass beaker so I would say uh, glass Baker and just say material uh, that it is made of because it will tell you whether that material uh, accepts heat faster or it accepts heat slower. So uh, the type of the material uh, has an impact in in the ta in the uh, overall experiment because, for example. Uh, we know some glasses uh, tends to absorb heat uh, faster, some tends to absorb heat slower. So dependent on the type of material you have, this could also have an impact on the results uh, that uh, we can have. It will depend whether uh, uh, this experiment take a longer time or it takes a shorter time based on the type of material that we pour eyes inside of and then what other material what other factor do you think could influence your result besides the type of the material uh, f uh, through which water is poured inside of what what, what else do you think could uh, impact this what 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 are i i would also talk about the temperature of the room the temperature of the room where the experiment is conducted so i would also talk about the temperature uh in fact let me say room temperature
Because why are we saying that? As the Benson burner burns, remember, uh, the average kinetic energy of the particles inside of the room will also have a major impact on this. If the, the, the room temperature, maybe it's standard, 25 degrees Celsius, that's fine. But what if the experiment was conducted on a very cold uh, uh, temperature of the day? That could also have an impact uh, on this. So the temperature, the room temperature also plays a significant role in this. What other thing do you think might have uh, influenced our result? What else? What, what else? And let us try to look at how many marks there. Two marks. So let's just have uh, the last one if there is. We have talked about the type of material that glass is made of. We talked about uh, the temperature taking into effect uh, the humidity, taking into effect the average kinetic uh, energy of the molecules uh, that uh, surrounds the beaker, of course. You will have to light them up to an excited state before you can even reach uh, the uh, glass beaker so that slows up uh, the rate at which uh, that water must boil. So we, 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 we are also taking that into account. We are very much taking into account the room temperature, just giving you a glimpse of information on that. What else do you think might influence uh, the experiment? What might also be a factor that influences the experiment? Besides uh, room temperature, maybe it was conducted on uh, a, a very cold day and then that would have an impact because of the surrounding air. And then we talked about uh, the, the glass beaker, the type of the material that makes it up. What else do you think might influence this experiment? Okay, let's say those are the only two. That's fine. Let's go to 1.3 and then 1.3, what are you measuring in this experiment? You are measuring the temperature through which uh, water uh, changes uh, the faces. Uh, we are measuring temperature, temperature of uh, water as it undergoes. Uh, phase changes. You must be very specific in science, more especially in chemistry. You can't just say we are measuring temperature. No, we are measuring temperature of water as it undergoes uh, phase changes. Again, uh, solid, liquid, then gas. Okay, that is fine. Two mark will be provided for that. And then we go to 1.4. Write an investigative question for your experiment. Now, an investigative question must be a question. A question that tells you what you are investigating. What is it that you are investigating? Right, the investigative question would be to say uh, that you are investigating the, uh, 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 the temperature difference as water changes from one phase to another. But it has to be a question. Remember, it's an investigative question. So meaning you can say what happens to the temperature of water as it changes from one phase to another. It has to be a question. So you can say uh, what happens what happens to the temperature what happens to the temperature of H2O as it uh, undergoes uh, the three the three uh, different phases. What happens to the temperature of H2O as it undergoes the three different phases? This is a question you are asking. What happens? to the temperature of H2O as it undergoes the three different phases. The phases being solid, liquid, and 
Guess. It has to be a question. An investigative question. You are asking something. And then via experiment, you will conclude. Very, very important. Rona, we were taught science by highly intellectual individuals. So we were able to grasp this at an early stage. And experiments were conducted so that we may see with understanding what is happening there. Visibly see, not a teacher giving you uh, the numbers randomly. So we, we, we never did that. We never did that. Right. Uh, be that as it may, I, I, I'm not lambasting anybody. I'm not speaking wrongly of anyone. I'm just saying that chemistry requires experiment. That's all. It's a fact. Let's go to 1.5. Right. Plot a graph placing temperature in degrees Celsius on the vertical axis and time in minutes on the horizontal <laughs> axis. Because uh, temperature is dependent on time. So meaning we have the dependent and the independent variables today. Right, uh, that is fine. That is fine. We will do exactly as they want. And I want to show you something here. This is fascinating. This is beyond the stars of life. They have provided us with a table here. And I want us to compare. I want us to compare what they have with what the teacher has written down for you guys. I want us to compare this because this is beyond the stars. So let me just have this 1.5 here. I want chemistry to make a lot of sense to you. And you're going to see this. Right. Uh, use the graph paper provided. They have a table for us. This is very good. I love this. Because it's going to show you where the problem is. So we have our time. In minutes. We have our temperature. In degrees Celsius. Now. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Let me write down the data first. They say at T0, the temperature was minus 4 degrees. We know that when temperature is below 0, it's freezing. We, we know that. Mm -hmm. We know that you are in a solid state. Okay, that's fine. And then when uh, the time was five, because we had to do this every five minutes, the temperature was zero degrees Celsius. This is very good. And then when time was 10, this was still zero degrees Celsius. When the time was 15 every five minutes, uh, this was uh, 45 degrees Celsius. Okay, that is fine. The temperature of your teacher was still zero. At 15 minutes, the temperature was, okay, that's fine. Let's go to 20. Uh, the temperature was already 100. Water was boiling at the 20th minute. Already water was boiling at 100 degrees. Okay. And it remained the same because water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. Now, this is fascinating. This is beyond imagination because i want to show you something whenever data is provided to you it has to make sense first of all data must make sense it is virtually impossible but let's not say it was maybe the type of material that was used here takes a longer time to absorb heat the latent heat of a substance and then here maybe the type of material that was used was uh, a soft material that absorbs heat uh, very very fast that is why this is this is the way in which it is but be that as it may the teacher must have never stopped before the water was boiled and look at something they said we must uh, leave this uh, we must keep on recording uh, three minutes after water uh, was boiling. So, first of all, your teacher must have never stopped at 40 minutes. She or he must have continued until water reached the temperature of 
100 degrees. That is the first mistake that he or she has done. Because now, you, you, she or he never saw when water was boiling. Why stop when the experiment tells you that you must continue this until water boils and leave it boiling for three minutes? So now let's compare the data. We have zero and the temperature was already positive 10. Was it here water a liquid or was it a solid at zero degree and the temperature was 10? Ah, my dear, you see. Ah, my dear, you see. You see the mistakes that you people do. Let's say maybe this was negative. Let's just say. It was a positive check. My dear, it looks like a negative and a positive at the same time. But let's say it was negative. You have this ice, you have taken ice out of the refrigerator and you have poured it inside of your glass beaker and it is still ice. The temperature, it's negative 10. When you press your stopwatch, this was negative, it was still freezing because everything below zero, it's freezing. Okay, and then for the first five minutes, it was at zero so the temperature is increasing because we know that zero is bigger than negative 10 so temperature is increasing and this is true that the temperature was increasing okay for another five minutes the temperature was still zero that makes a lot of sense okay so meaning some of the ice is being converted from uh, a solid to a liquid we understand that but the temperature is still very low because uh, liquid is trying to neutralize an ice okay and then for another five minutes now the temperature is 45 already at this time all the ice has turned into a liquid but for you we're still having ice trying to neutralize uh, water, liquid trying to neutralize water in a solid state. We will say that's fine. For another five minutes, all, probably all the ice is now in a liquid state. But at 20 minutes, already we are at 100 degrees Celsius liquid turning into a gas because water boils at that temperature okay but you are still in a liquid state you are still trying to evaporate for another five minutes you are still evaporating you are still trying to boil you are not yet there but we can see that there are some bubbles that are coming out of water showing that uh, we are preparing ourselves to take uh, another state. Still at 30, we are still there, but we haven't reached the state yet. At 35, many of us are now coming together as one. After another five minutes, we are still preparing those that are coming along. When are we going to leave with the state of a liquid to a gas, according to this? Maybe after an hour, who knows? Uh, this is a very poor data that we have. But this data makes a lot and lot more sense. So, the teacher stopped the experiment because the water couldn't uh, boil. And then he, he, he just lost the appetite. The appetite was lost and he just left the experiment. But this was properly done. After 15 minutes, when we add another 5 minutes, water was already boiling. And then he left this for the past 10 minutes. After it was boiling in the first 20 minutes, he left this for 10 minutes, even exceeded saying 3 minutes. He left this for 10 and the data remained constant. The thermometer couldn't move any higher. It just stopped at 100 to show that 
even if you can leave this for three days, I will still stand at 100 because I boil as water at 100 degrees. Okay. But the teacher here was struggling a lot, a lot and a lot. This will never boil, but this boils. So hence I'm saying there's an error in this experiment. There is a very, very serious error that transpired based on the data that is provided. This is highly problematic. I don't know whether this beaker was the biggest beaker we could ever imagine. That will take so long for water to boil. Maybe this was the minimum uh, with a very small radius. So that is why water boiled so quickly. But... Uh, this shouldn't be the results. The bottom line, this should have never been the result obtained. And we should have never stopped before water was boiling. So that we can know that it boiled maybe at 55. Or maybe it boiled at 1 hour and 5 minutes. We needed that data in order to plot the graph. Okay. So... Uh, draw the heating uh, curve of water using the data obtained. And we are going to use this data in order to draw that. We will start first with this one and we will also draw this one. The data that you obtained and see the difference between the two. That's exactly what we will do. And we are going to draw them on the same set of an axis so that we may see where the error truly occurred. So I'm going to try and lower uh, the Apple phone that I use so that we can, we can do that. Right. Uh, let me just try to have uh, a... As you can see from the experiment, we, they told us that time should be on the horizontal axis and temperature on the vertical axis because time being independent and the temperature dependent on, on time because temperature rises with an, an increase in, in time. Right. So uh, let us try to draw that. We have temperature on the Y and then we have time on X and as you can see that time is positive. So we will only need the positive x-axis. We don't need the negative x-axis. So I'm going to do this. We only need this. Uh, and we have uh, time in minutes. This is very, very important. You must label your axis. And we have uh, temperature in degrees Celsius. I don't know whether this is clearly visible, very good. And now, we now need to check how we, uh, we write our numbers, how we will uh, give our intervals there. Now looking at time, we know that if there is a time difference of five, this is very much fine. Uh, we can use five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Yeah, that's fine. We can use a zero, five. Remember this, the difference, the spaces between those numbers has to be the same. Zero, five, I'll say 10, 15, uh, 20, 25, 30, uh, 35, 40, and 45, 50, 55, and 60. That would be the time. And then on my vertical axis, uh, trying to accommodate the 85, just imagine uh, this. Um, uh, here, let me use 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and so on. So let me just say 10, 20, 30, uh, 40, 50, uh, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. 110, 120, 130, 140. Right. Starting with this correct data that makes a lot of sense, we will say when time zero, the temperature was negative. Okay, so what we can do, we will have our zero. This is not a problem. 
In order to accommodate that negative 4, let's use 2, 4, 6, 8. Because remember, this is the y-axis. So I'll say negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8. And then I'll say when time is 0, the temperature was negative 4. So when x is 0, y is negative 4. You are below 0, you are freezing. Very important. When time is 5 minutes, the temperature is 0. When time is 5, the temperature is 0. There it is. Are we fine, my dear? When time is 10, we are still at 0. There we are. When time is 15, we are at 45. 45 should be somewhere there. I'm not very good with the drawing, but I will try my best. Uh, when time is 20, we have 100. So at time 20, uh, we have uh, 100. I don't know whether that was drawn correct. And then at T25, we still have a 100. Uh, at 30, we are still at 100. The temperature remains constant. Right, let us try to draw the cooling curve. Okay? Yeah. And we know that it will remain constant. Yo. We know that it will remain constant. So this would be the cooling curve of water. Okay, this is fine. For this uh, correct data that we have, and then, be that as it may, let's try to check your data now. I, I wish I had a different color so that we may see and know the difference. I wish I had a different color to demonstrate this. But I don't have it. But we will see the difference. Let's now try to incorporate this one. The problematic one. The one that never even boils. When time is zero. So let me have this negative 10 here. When time is zero, we have a negative 10. Nothing wrong with that. At t equals 5, we have zero. That's fine. There it is. At t equals 10, we still have zero. There it is. This is fine. And then when t is 15, we still have zero. Jesus. Okay. When t is 20, we have 25. At 20, we have uh, 25. Where is 25? It has to be here. At 20, we have uh, 25. At 25, we have 45. When T is 25, we have uh, 45. And where is 45? There it is. Very good. And then when t is 30, we have 75. 30, we have uh, 75. There it is. And then at uh, 35, we have 85. 35, we have 85. And 40, we have 45, 85. It remained constant. There was never a change in temperature from uh, 5 minutes of 35 to 40. It remained the same. Yo, why didn't it remain the same between 25 and 30? Why didn't it remain the same from 30 to 35? Only to remain the same from 35 to 40. There's an error in the data that is provided here. But be that as it may, let's go to 40 and have 85. Where is this? 3585. Sorry, man. Yes, 3585. Okay. 
Here we are. There is 85. And then at 40, it remained at 85. Maybe it will even remain constant at 45 and 50, 55. It will just remain constant. Maybe. Let's try to draw this cooling curve. I know that it will go from this. It's the same. It remained even the same. It will go like this. It will go like this. And it will remain constant. That's exactly what the data provides. From negative 10 to 5 to 10, from 5, 10, 15, it remained at 0. When time was 20, it was 25. And then when it, it has not yet even boiled, water was not even boiling. The temperature from uh, 35 to 40 just remained constant. If it was able to remain constant from 35 to 40, Will it not remain constant from 40 to 45? It will remain constant and water has not yet even boiled. Now look at the difference here. Water boils at 100 degrees, but this type of water that we are having here seems to boil at 85. This type of water, I don't know which H2O it, it is, but it seems to boil at 85. The laws of chemistry and physics are being wrapped around one another. They are wrapped up between uh, themselves. Water can never and ever boil at 85. It, it, it will never. Maybe this is a new data that we need to adjust ourselves to. But based on the current data that we have, water boils at 100. And it will remain constant no matter how long you will boil that water. The thermometer will point exactly to 100 because that's when water boils. But this one, it's a different thermometer with a different type of water. Water now boils at 85. Hmm? There's a serious problem with this data that you are having. A very, very serious problem. I don't know whether what I'm saying is making sense to you, but it seems to make sense to me. It makes a lot of sense to myself. And then we are done with 1.5. This were the requirements for us to draw. And then now let's go to 1.6. Can you see the difference between the two? Hmm? Uh, I will, I will, I will, I will compress this tutorial just now when we are done. And then I will ensure that within 10 minutes or 20 minutes, it is already posted in our YouTube channel. Under grade 10 physics, you will find this uh, tutorial. So that maybe you can share this with some other learners. They can see where the error is. Some of your friends. Right. Uh, in 1.6, now that we have plotted what was important when we plot the graph, first of all, we must have the labeling of our x and the y axis. And then you must give this uh, graph the name. This is what the cooling curve of water. It's the name of the graph. Cooling curve of water. What? This is the theme. This is the heading of, of your graph. And then what else will they look at? They will look whether your interval is correct on the x-axis. They will look whether your interval is correct on the y-axis. They will look as to whether the shape is consistent with the data. And then when all that is done, you will have uh, your full mark. You will have your full mark. So I drew both so that you can see the difference. Right, 1.6. At what temperature does the heating uh, not result in a temperature rise? Very important. At what temperature does the heating not result in a temperature rise? 
35 to 40. The heating results in a temperature being constant. It's not rising. It's not going down. It remains that. And it shouldn't be like that. It should be at 100 degrees. Because no matter how long you can heat it, it will remain at 100 because that's when water boils. And it cannot exceed that number. But based, I don't know whether they are asking based on this or they are asking based on that. But we can say here, based on the data that our teacher provided, I'm being very specific here. Based on the data of our teacher, based on the data of our teacher, uh, temperature remain constant uh, from 35 minutes to 40 minutes at 85 degrees Celsius. Being very specific. I said question time money 1.5. Kito. I think 1.5 yeah one key. Yan tati. data Remember 1.5 we tweak. Plot a graph placing temperature on the vertical axis and time in minutes on the horizontal axis. Use the graph paper provided. So I give a le conducted experiment. La fwa di results giti. Rona mona na no way this results. Ki table e no et one from whoever, I don't know. Marasi de ita yalo nae. Hey, so Rona, rebua based on the data that you guys found from your teacher. Hey, hakibu we on this one. Nagi bua kaya luna di tichere data move. I'm saying, based on the data uh, of our teacher, temperature remains constant from 35 minutes to 40 minutes at 85 degrees. Ele nyona niti kie. It remains constant. Mehan. Right. Uh, alternatively, alternatively, uh, based on the data uh, on 1.5, uh, the temperature The temperature remain constant uh, from 20 minutes till 30 minutes at 100 degrees Celsius. And this should make sense because once we hit 100 degrees Celsius, the thermometer will stay constant at that point. The needle or whatever it is will remain there because that's the temperature when water boils. So I have given two alternatives here based on the two separate data that are independent of one another. Okay. And a six mark is provided for this. Six mark is provided for this. 1.7. What changes occur at these temperatures? What are the changes that occurs at these temperatures? What can you observe uh, at these temperatures? Let's start first with this one. What changes occurs with this one? No change with this one because water has not yet boiled. So based on this, there are no changes that we can observe. Again, so uh, again, based, ah, uh, Jesus, based on the data our teacher fed us with, there are no changes. Why? Because water is still in a liquid state yes water is still in a liquid state uh, but uh, 
based on data at 1.5 uh, water changes from liquid to gas at 100 degrees celsius that is the change that is the change that we see based on this data because now the average kinetic uh, energy of the molecules has increased they now have enough kinetic energy they now have enough momentum to leave the liquid phase and enter into the gaseous phase so raibona le rona o hebana e ka metsi ya jole a ba le ya tshe a ba le ya metsi ya right 1.8 explain in your own words what happens when the water molecules are changing phase what happens when the water molecules are changing phase in your own words what can you say more what happens Eh? What happens? What happens, Mo? Opa umbrel. Explain in your own words what happens when the water molecules are changing phase. What's a halam when the water molecules are changing phase? Based on the kinetic molecular theory of gases. Defining temperature as the average kinetic mo uh, Kinetic energy of the molecules based on that. Okay, what happens in your own words? If you mark when water molecules are changing phase, Baba will refer to that. So the first thing that I do am bulleting What happens when the water molecules are changing phase? First of all, Kori, uh, they are kinetic energy increases as their energy levels rises they acquire more momentum they acquire more momentum regarding her Kinetic energy increases as their energy levels uh, rises. Uh, they acquire more momentum. Regarding happy mo. Explain in your own words what happens when the water molecules are changing phase. Regarding ha. Uh, regarding as uh, you heat water uh, the molecules uh, become excited they become excited and they are the bonds that the bonds that binds them together are broken, become excited, and the bond energy, and the bond energy is broken. Ah, yep, the bond energy is broken. Right. And then regarding her, as you heat water, the molecules become excited and the bond energy is broken. Ah, yep. Uh, and then as you break the bonds between the molecules that holds them together, the space between the molecules is increasing. The surface area. Uh, the space, the space between the molecules increases and they are able to move more freely what else can we say 
What more can we say? Pressure, the pressure of the system increases. The pressure of the system increases with an increase in temperature and more effective collisions takes place and more effective collisions takes place this references to the Boltzmann distribution curve but we will deal with that some other time the pressure of the system is increasing because they collide with the side walls of the container that contains them. And then as this pressure is increasing with an increase in temperature, they become more excited because they acquire from one energy level to another. And then uh, as you break the bonds between the molecules, giving them sufficient energy to escape from one state to another. Right, you are saying that the pressure of the system increases with an increase in the temperature and more effective collisions takes place. What happens when the water molecules are changing phase? This is exactly what is happening. We have a bulletin 1, 2, 3, 4. Enough said for grade 10. Enough said and this should suffice uh, to provide enough data and information to grasp that format. This is exactly what is happening. This is exactly uh, what is happening. Right. Uh, let us go uh, to question two. Let us go to question two. But I will have to erase a few things here. Uh, question two. But you are not going to erase anything because I don't know how you are. But we are. Yes. Ah, what I download? When not I download? I think I post YouTube. Then when you will download from that? When I download? Take up a fellow shoot for no. Right. Uh, uh, I'm going to erase. We're not so sorry, little twenty, so someone don't choose. Little twenty and I are twenty, I'll say it's hard. Also probably doing it. Alright, uh, let me just do this so that we can give space for question two. So let me just have uh, a heading of question two. Right. Uh, in question two, they say. Let us are investigating the effect of increasing temperature on two different substances over a period of time. Study the graph below and answer the questions that follows. Uh, I will need to draw this graph so that we are making sense of this. Uh, I will honestly need to draw this graph. Right, uh, let me just also erase this uh, let me try to draw this graph we have a time in minutes we have a temperature in degrees 
Okay, so they are using an interval of 10, 20, uh, of 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. So they are saying, okay, uh, this is 0, this is 20, 40, uh, 60, 80, 100. Okay. And then this is negative uh, 20. We have it there. I'm not going to be very, very accurate in my drawing here. But I can see that they have something like this. And this is my 5. What do I do in the Okay, so I have my time in minutes. Okay, and uh, I have uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, that is fine. And uh, this is what I have. At 5, it will rise. Let me go to, uh, this is 80, something like this. Oh, living God. We have uh, something like this, and then this will be between 50. I, I, I truly can't draw this. I, I don't want to lie. I, I, I can't draw this. But what I think I can do, let me do this. Let me do this, and then do this, and then rise again. And then just do this because that's exactly how it looks like. So let me just do this. This is for the first one. And now let me try to position this. This is five. And uh, this is. Right, let me not have a 5 today because now it's going to mislead me a lot. Let me have, a, okay, my 5 because the interval has to be the same. 5, the second one. It's like this, and then it goes like this, where we have uh, 10, from 10, it goes in like this, and then from there at exactly 100, Because this one keeps going up. At exactly 100, we have that. 
and then it goes in like this then it goes up i i don't know whether the drawing is correct i'm not very good with the drawing honestly i i don't want to lie i'm never and ever good with the drawings but this is what we have so this will be 5 10 15 20 uh, 25 30. this is what we have suppose we have that <coughs> and then from that they say uh let us investigate in the effect of increasing temperature on two different substances over a period of time uh study the graph below and answer the questions that follows so remember let us are investigating the effect of increasing temperature on two different substances over a period of time now in 2.1 in 2.1 In 2.1, they say, give a suitable heading for this graph. Uh, what would be the suitable heading for this graph? Uh, the learners are investigating the effect of increasing temperature on two different substances over a period of time. So uh, we will say a graph of temperature versus time. We can say that. We can say uh the graph of temperature versus time that is what the uh, the heading of the graph would be because you have time on the x and you have y on uh temperature on the y we can say this is the graph of temperature versus time or whatever that is making sense to us 2.2.1 write down the dependent variable the dependent variable will always be on the y-axis this is temperature in degrees celsius please do not forget to say in degrees celsius the independent variable will be time in minutes and then 2.3 In 2.3, write down an investigative question for this investigation. They said learners are investigating. Remember, it's an investigative question. The effect of increasing temperature on two different substances over a period of time. So I can say, uh, what will happen? What will happen to the temperature of two different substances as I increase their temperature. It's a question I'm asking. What will happen to the temperature of two different substances as I increase their temperature? That's a question. It's an investigative question. I want to find out what will happen. And then 2.4. In which phase is a substance 1 at minus 10 degrees Celsius? If you are at minus 10 degrees uh, Celsius, in which phase? Are you in a solid, liquid, or gas state? If you are minus 10 degrees, you are in a solid state. Two point five. At what temperature does substance two melt? At what temperature does substance two melt? Now, here is substance two. Here, substance two. Entirely solid state. Again, in negative. Here, five minutes. Entirely solid. Here, here, only at. Uh, only uh, between 5 and 10 
is at zero. So here it's an at zero ya melta. I get so bar uh, at what temperature does the substance two melt at zero degrees? Zero degree Celsius. It begins to melt. Alright. Uh, 2.6. Define the term boiling point. What is a boiling point? If you are to define boiling king, boiling, boil, you are boiling at that point. King, boiling point. Boiling point should be the temperature at which a substance boils. That's boiling point. The temperature at which a substance boils. Or boil a water. Boil a good boil So, a boiling point define the term, but we can just say that boiling point, boiling point, uh, is the temperature. At which, uh, with 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 with, uh, we are not speaking about water here. Again, we are speaking about two substances which are not specific. So, water. Boiling point is the temp the temperature at which uh, a substance boils. Again. Um. That's what boiling point is. It is the temperature at which a substance boils. But because we are not told whether it's water or what. Nerekare, boiling point is the temperature at which a substance boils at 100 degrees Celsius, which is water. But now more, we don't know which substances these are. So we will, but please, uh, maybe the definition might be uh, more than this. You will just go and look at that inside of your notes. It's been quite some time not dealing with these uh, terminologies. Alright, uh, and then 2.7. State the phase change that takes place at B. State the phase change that takes place at B. Now we have uh, in here, where is this? here at B at B here yes uh, state the phase change that takes place at B uh, in fact yes we are already closer to 8 we are closer to 80 degree so what will be the phase change more State the phase change that takes place at B. If really B, really the temperature uh, above 8. Uh, the temperature above 8. What will be the phase change more? If the temperature is above 8, the phase change. Learners are investigating the effect of increasing temperature on two different substances over a period of time. Which substances these are, we are never told. State the phase. So how will we know the phase change? How will we honestly know the phase change? Because even those two different substances are never said to us. Because what if we can assume that uh, the two substances, maybe it's water in a liquid and water in a gas, in a, in, 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 in a solid state. But that's, that will be very problematic because this, if this would be water, this is water at a solid state, and that's still water at solid state. It's just that the time at which uh, they will... Uh, Condense will be different the times at which they will evaporate the, It will also be different because they started at different temperatures, but we don't know what those substances are So when they say state the first change that takes place at B 
What are we going to say? What is the phase change that takes place at B? Because B is this constant. This constant. So what will be the phase change at B? No change. Now I'll say no change because it remains constant. So I will say no phase change. Two point eight. Explain why does uh, not rise. Explain why the temperature does not rise at section B on the graph. Yes, this is true. So what we said it's true. Explain why the temperature does not rise at section B on the graph. Why is the temperature not rising at section B on the graph? Why? Why the temperature does not rise at section B on the graph? Why is it not rising? Because the time Iona, is increasing, we can see that. The time is increasing, but the temperature is constant. Why? Why? And format is provided for this. Why? Explain why the temperature does not rise at section B. Why is, th is there no temperature rise at section B? Could this mean... But this is, this is fascinating. It's not rising at B for a certain period of time. But once after that, it keeps on rising. So why is it not rising at, uh, at, at section B? What could be a possibility for that? Of this whatever substance that we don't know what it is. Hey, my dear. Why... The temperature does not rise at section B on the graph. Why? First of all, we don't know what these two materials are. Substance A and substance B. We don't know what they are. But we want to investigate what will happen to the temperature as we increase of those two substances, how they will behave to that temperature. And we don't know what substance A is and substance B or substance 1 and 2, but we can see that at section B, uh, the temperature remains constant and we want to find out why. Why is that? What are the possibilities? I leave that for you to think about. 2.9, name the apparatus used to measure the average kinetic energy of the particles. Name the apparatus used uh, to measure the average kinetic energy of the particles. What do we use at the moment? In a way, a thermometer. And then 2.10. How does the average kinetic energy of substance 1 and substance 2 differ at 13 minutes? Now, at 13 minutes, uh, 10. Uh, let me check this. Uh, 13 minutes. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So to 10.1, so 10 plus 15 divided by 2, this would be 25 over 2, which is 12.5. Uh, so let me look for 12.5 in between, I get it again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 
So I would say uh, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And I have this point. So at this point, that is in between. Babaka at 13 minutes. So this would be uh, 12.5. So 12.5, 13. 13. This should be 13. I have a temperature there. And I also have a temperature there. The temperature would be here now. So this would be I know this is also 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This would be 20 plus 40 divided by 260 over 2, which is 30. So this would be 30. All right. So this would be um, the first one would be 12,5. And 30 as the coordinate and the second one will be 12,5 but the coordinate would be uh, 60 plus 80 divided by 2 140 divided by 2 uh, 70 so when they say how does the average kinetic energy of substance 1 and substance 2 differ at 13 minutes? So they are looking for temperature. So I would say the difference is 70 minus 30, which is 40 degrees Celsius. So that would be that. Uh, how does the average kinetic energy, which is the temperature? Uh, so I would say temperature is equals to 70 minus 30 which is 40 degrees celsius this is the difference and we are done we are fully and fully done